I don't think I'm uniquely busy, but over the past year, my schedule has become increasingly crowded, making it much more difficult for me to do things I want to do, like making these videos. It's already rare that I have motivation and free time at the same time, so I made a list of methods I use to maximize my free time when I have it. These are the methods I use to maximize productivity and remove frustration. So one quick thing to note before I start this video, my schedule is in kind of a weird place at this point because as a high school student, I spend most of my day at school and then I come home in the evening and I do a combination of personal activities, creative work, school work, and college applications. But really these tips work for all of that and I use them for all of these things. First thing I started doing to track my time is I made a bullet journal time tracker. I made a simple two page spread and just used my zebra mild liners to color in different sections of my day, each color representing a different activity. This was really good for analyzing my habits and seeing what times I wasn't using my time effectively, what times I was using my time effectively. This would allow me to see patterns or trends and kind of correct my actions to see what I need to do in the future. This looks pretty complex, but actually I probably spend only about 15 minutes on it per day. And I found that the insight I gained from it is really valuable. Not only does this provide valuable insight, but it also holds me accountable. Knowing that what I might be doing right now could be categorized as a waste of time later motivates me to find more productive endeavors for the present. So this next one is similar to the bullet journal, but it's more oriented toward the future. And this is time blocking with Google Calendar. I try to schedule as many events as I can with my Google Calendar. This allows me to easily see my day at a glance and easily reschedule things without making a huge mess in my bullet journal. I think a huge benefit to the Google Calendar as opposed to a simple to-do list in my bullet journal is that by scheduling a time of day to do something, I get a notification and I have the obligation to be doing that thing for a certain period of time. I think this is much more effective than a to-do list because a to-do list is much easier to ignore, but when I see the notification and when I see that task currently in progress, I feel more obligated to be doing something. Also, the Google Calendar syncs between all my devices so I can view my list of things to do at school, on my Chromebook, at home on my laptop, or anywhere else when I'm on my phone. The Google Calendar is the newest thing on this list and I implemented it a few weeks ago because one of my friends showed me their Google Calendar and how effective it was. Before, I had only used this to schedule specialty events like a haircut or an event or concert, but now I use it to schedule things that I do every single day. This way I can just see my day at a glance and find those little pockets of free time and also it makes me more adherent to my daily routines. So this next one is very simple, but it's just to set an expectation when working on something. Everyone has heard of Parkinson's Law, which simply states that a project will fill the time allotted for it. And this is something that I have struggled with personally for a very long time. Whether it's homework or a video or a scholarship or an essay, literally anything, if I give myself all night to do it, it will take all night to do it. So what I've started doing is when I sit down to work on something, I take a few moments before I start to think when I'll get this done. And then periodically as I'm working on it, I'll check the time and update. Sometimes I have to move it forward, sometimes I have to move it back, sometimes I miss it completely. But no matter what I do, setting an expectation gives me a good estimate on when the project will be done and it lets me know how much time I'm spending on this. The last tip, and arguably the most important, is something called the 5217 rule. This comes from a book I read last year, When, by Daniel H. Pink. The book quotes a study from the company Desk Time. They make an application that tracks how computer users use their applications throughout the day, and they found that on average, the 10% most productive workers work for 52 minutes and then rest for 17 minutes. And these are odd numbers because of the average and they don't add up to an hour, but actually I found that this is extremely effective. I think that a Pomodoro timer with 25 minutes is too short and focus sprints of 90 minutes are just too long. Especially on a school night or a Saturday morning, 52 minutes is the perfect amount of time to just sit down and work. 17 minutes is the perfect amount of time to reflect on my past session, distract myself for a bit, and then prepare for the next one. 
Breaking up my work into these small 52 minute sessions actually keep me more focused. If I spend too much time, I'll end up getting distracted, but having a frequent break to reflect or distract myself actually helps me stay focused. It also works really well for creative projects because I can get some things done in 52 minutes and then step back. And in those 17 minutes, I can reflect and come up with new approaches and new ideas. And then it's like the second session, I'm looking at my project with a whole new set of eyes because I had that 17 minute break. If there's one key takeaway from any of the methods mentioned in this video, it's that a little bit of structure can go a long way. If you've made it this far in the video, I encourage you to try just one of these methods and see what kind of changes you'll make. So those are the methods I have been using to track and manage my time. Hopefully you found some use from this video and hopefully you feel inspired to start doing something. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and subscribe because I heard boosted engagement helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.